What's up, everybody? Welcome to another video inside the media cabinet. Happy first day of summer. That's right. It is the summer solstice. Uh, you know what that means. It is the longest day of the year. So, in honor, I'm probably putting out my longest video of the year. That is until my year in review video comes out at the end of 2022. Um, I got a really, really awesome uh, book haul for you guys today. Uh, last week, uh, I went out to this amazing bookstore uh, called McKay's Used Books um, in Manassas here in Virginia. Uh, and I spent an awesome amount of money on 18 movie novelizations. And one thing I do want to showcase, uh, <clears throat> even though it is not a movie novel, it is a pop icon from a, one of my favorite slasher movies. The slasher that actually came out when I was born, and that is... This awesome geeky tiki that is Ghostface. This was the last one at FYE that I went to. Um, I've been thinking about getting a geeky tiki for a while. Um, I like the way that they look. I think they're kind of cool. Uh, and it is it is uh, ceramic, microwave, and dishwasher safe. But I will not be using it as a cup. I just have it on my desk as a display piece. So, that is that. Alright, before we jump into this epic 18 um, book movie haul, uh, book haul um, as always, if you like all things physical media, whether it be uh, movies, 4Ks, steelbooks, movie novelizations, video games, and Funko Pops, make sure to hit that subscribe button. Drop a like if you like today's video, and make sure to hit the bell icon um, to be notified when I drop a new video. Um, with all that being said, uh, remember, this is a book haul video, so as I do with all my book hauls, I showcase the book, and I do a one-page preview. Um, so, hang on to your butts, grab some popcorn, this is going to be a long one, so just prepare yourself. Because remember, I do all these one take. I don't edit or anything. Um, so I'll get through them as fast as possible. But I'm just happy to be showcasing this today. Um, with all that being said, uh, let's jump in to our first stack here. Now those of you who are part of the Paper Movies Novelization Book Club on Facebook... You've seen a blurry picture of this entire collection, and now you're about to see the entire collection. Only one person in the book club knows uh, what books these are, and none of you do, so I hope you guys like these. I got a really good collection here. Um, I didn't really go off of a list. Uh, I just went in there, and whatever I saw, I was like, yank, 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 I grabbed. Um... So I'm happy to have these. I will say there were some books that I wish that I did end up grabbing. I found two of the Resident Evil movie novelizations. And sadly, I did not pick them up. Because uh, I thought I was going to hit way too high on the money scale. Um, but I did really good. So, with all that being said, let's jump into our first uh, stack and our first book. The Novel of the blockbuster hit film, a novel by David Hagberg, based on the screenplay by John Bram Canto and Michael Ferris, story by John Bram Santo and Michael Ferris, and Titty, Ty, Teddy Safin. We have Schwarzenegger, Terminator 3, Rise of the Machines. Uh, this one I have been looking for for a while. Uh, this and the next book that I have um, to add on to my Terminator uh, collection. Huge shout out to Adam because he did send me a copy of Terminator 2 Judgment Day a while back. And that's the first Terminator book that I have in my collection. 
I will at some point get the novelization for the first Terminator. It's just hard to find because it's the most, it's very expensive and it's really rare to find. So, but here's the cover for the book. And we got our spine. And then the back, if you want to pause the video, read the back. And this is from TOR Books. Originally $7.99. Let's get into a one page preview for this. I'm gonna go ahead and read. Yeah, first page. July 2029, outside what was Colorado Springs, Colorado. Travel anywhere for humans had become next to impossible over the last 20 years with the intens intensification of the machine wars. Human settlements, sometimes hanging on only by sheer determination, was critically important because they were the last pockets of resistance. They also were important because of the sharp decrease in the human birth rate. Who wanted to bring a child into a world of chaos, death, and destruction? These days, the sparks of human existence were reduced to dim flickers around the world. The Center for Machine Activity and Skynet Control was 2,000 feet beneath the Varro Mountain near the Continental Divide west of the Colorado Springs. The installation had been home to old U.S. military installations since Judgment Day when Skynet started and conducted the global thermonuclear war that all but wiped human beings off the face of the earth. Navarro Mountain had, and that's our one page preview for Rise of the Machines. Not one of my favorites in the Terminator movies. Uh, Judgment Day will always be my favorite as I believe it is everybody's favorite. And of course the first Terminator because it's just, you know, Arnold. But I don't like the first one because I don't like Arnold being evil. But that's okay. There's one that we truly do hate, even next to Dark Fate, even though I like Dark Fate, but this is the one that's the most hated Terminator novel and movie. Uh, the official movie novelization by Alan Dean Foster, based on the motion picture written by John Brancato and Michael Ferris, we have the novelization for Terminator Salvation. I've seen this movie, and it, do it, it does suck. Um, I think after the original Terminator movies, Terminator, Judgment Day, and Rise of the Machines, they, they were good. But then you have this... That then goes into Genesis and Dark Fate, and everyone was like, "Why? Just, just why? This movie's just god awful bad." I mean, there might be some people that like this movie, but then you have the people that are like, "Just why? You why'd you make it? Just why?" So, I mean, it, it, you have different people, different opinions. Uh, critics were said the same thing. Chapter 1, Longview State Correctional Facility was no better or worse, no more architecturally attractive or depressing than any other maximum security prison in the state of Texas, which meant that on the inmates' grudge of such wretched establishments, it fell somewhere between dismal and but ugly. Its residents, both short and long term, tended to be as hard and unforgiving as the land atop which they their current place of residence had been raised. Few blue-collar criminals dared raise hand or heed among the, gro the growing populace whose professional pursuits tended to involve cracking heads as opposed to pursuing them, persuading them. Or to put it another way, Longview was home to far more head crackers than crack heads. Among the former could be accounted a certain highly anti antisocial specimen named Marcus Wright. Regrettably, for much of his life, Wright had been in the wrong. At the moment, he was sitting on a cot in a small piece of concrete hill, staring at the wall opposite. The vision of flecking stone and cement had nothing particular to recommend it, but it beat gazing at any of the three men standing nearby. Two wore uniforms, the third did not. And that is literally the end of the first page. It literally is. So, uh, there's our spine and our back. Not really much to the back. So, hopefully the book is better than the movie. 
I hope it's not the same. And uh, next, <clears throat> number one New York Times bestseller, now a major motion picture from Universal Pictures uh, by Robert Ludlum. We have the next in the Jason Bourne series, um, going with the movies, uh, we have the Bourne Ultimatum. Uh, this is the cover that has, even though you can't see his front face, the front of his face, has um, Matt Damon in it. Um, this is my third Jason Bourne novel. I was happy to find this one with like the movie cover on the front instead of just the base cover. Um, so uh, this book, I think I only got for like 49 cents at the bookstore. So this was a steal. Um, I've still never seen any of the Jason Bourne books. I know there's a steel book out that I would really like to get. Um, I'll get it at some point so so I can watch them. Page one is our prologue. Darkness has had descended on Manassas, Virginia, a countryside alive with nocturnal undercurrents as Bourne crept through the woods, bordering the estate of General Norman Swain. Startled birds fluttered out of their of their black recesses crows awoke in the trees and called their longs, and then, as if calmed by a foraging conspirator, kept silent. Manassas, the key was here, the key that would unlock the subterranean door that led to Carlos the Jackal, the assassin who wanted to destroy David Webb and his family. Webb, get away from me, David, screamed Jason Bourne in the silence of his mind. Let me be the killer you cannot be. With each scissoring cut into the thick high wire fence, he understood the inevitability, confirmed inevitable, sorry, confirmed by this heavy breathing and the sweat that fell from his hairline, no matter how hard he tried to keep his body in reasonable shape. He was fifty years of age. He could not do with ease what he did thirteen years ago in Paris when under orders he had stalked the jackal. It was something to think about, not dwell upon. There were Marie and his children now, David's wife, David's children, and there was nothing he could not do as long as he willed it. David Webb was disappearing from his psyche. Only the predator Jason Bourne would remain. He was, though. He crawled inside and stood up, instantly, rapidly checking his equipment with the fingers of both hands. Weapons, an automatic as well as CO2 dark pistol, Zeiss Icon binoculars, a scabbard hunting knife. They were all the Predator needed, for he was now behind the lines in enemy territory. The enemy that would lead him to Carlos. When I read these, and when I think about like the storyline for Jason Bourne, the first thing that comes to mind is Moon Knight. That's what I think of when I look at these. So... I really want to see these movies. Um, I like Matt Damon, and I know that there is a novel for the one with Jeremy Renner. I just know that there's not a novel for the one that came after that, uh, which was Jason Bourne, which was the last movie uh, that I think they did for the Bourne series. And now we move on to the last book for this stack. Before we move on to stack two, this one I'm very happy to have acquired. Um, now that I found the sequel, I was happy to find the first one. A book by Dean Devlin and Roland Emmerich and Stephen Molstad. Now a major motion picture from 20th Century Fox starring Will Smith, Bill Pullman, and Jeff Goldblum. We have ID for Independence Day. This is the actual Independence Day novel, not one of the side stories. Um, I've been seeing a whole bunch of side novels thinking that it was the Independence Day novel, and it's not. This is the official novelization. Um, and I'm happy to have this one. Because, like I said, I have the sequel, but now I'm happy to have this one back. So, um, again, I've never seen Independence Day or Independence Day Resurgence. I think my mom has, but I've never seen it. So, okay, here we go. The Sea of Tranquility was an eerily still wasteland. A silent, crater-shaped outdoor tomb of ashes and stone. Two sets of footprints led into the powdery gray soil surrounding the landing site, each one as freshly cut as the day it was made. On the horizon, a curved silver of the bright earth was rising into the sky, the vivid blue of its oceans a stark contrast to the colorless valley. 
hammered into the lunar surface with a sensor rods of a size mom size o meter. A square box capable of detecting the crash of a sea sized meteor at the distance of fifty miles and on the far side of the camp an American flag waving proudly in a non existent breeze. The entire site was littered with debris, scientific experiments and the cartons which had carried them. The unused plastic bags used to gather soil samples and a handful of commemorative trinkets. This equipment, carelessly scattered around an area the size of a baseball infield, had been imported by the astronauts of Apollo 11. The first two humans to set foot on the moon, when they left, they jettisoned everything, deemed non-essential for the ride back home. Armstrong and Aldrin had taken one giant step for man and left behind a ton of garbage for mankind. The air decades-old footprints marched 15 paces out towards the horizon in every direction before turning back to the center of the camp. Seen from high above, they formed a pattern in the sand like a large misshapen daisy. At the eye of this flower stood the gleaming lunar landing platform, a four-footed framework of tubes and gold foil which looked like a jungle gym on a hastily abandoned campground, marooned deep in a sea of silence. The spot had the creepy aspect of a long-ago picnic which had come to an abrupt and terrifying end, as if there had been no time for the visitors to pack up there, and that's it. That's the end of the one-page preview for Independence Day. Um, can't wait to read this. Um, it, this, just like, I mean, it's space. It's good sci-fi fun, you know? Aliens and Jeff Goldblum. That's all that matters. <laughs> okay, so that's the end of our first stack. Quick little observance again. And now we're getting into our second stack. Uh, for all the Vin Diesel lovers out there, uh, I think you're going to like this next one. Um, the novelization of a new science fiction action adventure epic film from Universal Pictures by Alan Dean Foster, based on a motion picture screenplay written by David Tuhay, to, to hey, to hey, I believe. Uh, we have the Chronicles of Riddick. Uh, never seen these either. Um, I just know uh, it has Vin Diesel in it. Um, I know that there is a sequel which is just called Riddick. I believe. <coughs> Excuse me. I believe this is the first one. Someone correct me in the um, comments if I'm wrong. So I'll end on here at the back. And here's the spine. It's from Del Rey, which is famous for producing the Star Wars books, I believe. I could be wrong. And um, the um, Transformers novels. Chapter 1. No matter how long or how hard they strive, no matter how extensive their education as a species, no matter what they experience of the small heavens and larger hells they create for themselves, it seems that humans are destined to see their technological achievements always exceed their ability to understand themselves. Certainly there was no understanding, no meeting of the minds or the world called Aquilia Major. There was only the devastation of one mindset by another. Proof of it took the form of a statue fashioned of advanced reinforced Performa resin. It was an imposing piece of work, for all that it had been reproduced by its originators on many other worlds, too many other worlds, according to some not nearly enough, according to those who had put it in its place, its massive footing firmly it rammed into the resident soil of Aquila Major. It was a constant icon of the necromongers, over 500 meters tall, who gaped open mouth at the... And that's the end of our first page preview for Riddick. So, um, I know I um, this video is taking long. Um, so, instead of just doing the rest of these um, with one page preview uh, for today, I'm just going to go through and I'm going to show off uh, the rest of the books. So, up next... The official movie novelization uh, by Greg Keyes, written by Jonathan Nolan and Christopher Nolan, based on the film from Warner Brothers Pictures and Paramount Pictures, we have on the front cover 
of Interstellar, we have Matthew McConaughey, and I know this is Matthew McConaughey, Michael Caine, Jessica Chastain, and Anne Hathaway. Never seen this, but really interested to watch it. Next up, we have another Matt Damon novel, uh, the official movie novelization by Mac Mark Morris, directed by Zhang Yimo, story by Mac Max Brooks and Edward Z Zivick, and Marshall Hers. I don't know how to say this. Uh, we got the novelization for The Great Wall. Next up, this one I was really excited to find. Um, there was a lot of copies of this one, and I think there's an ongoing joke uh, between Matthew and Adam with this particular book. I believe this is the book. Um, it's a major motion picture from 20th Century Fox, novelization by K.J. Anderson, based on the screenplay by James Dale Robinson, based upon the comic books by Alan Moore and Kevin O'Neill. We have LXG, The League of Extraordinary Gentlemen, with, of course, Sean Connery, front and center. And that's stack number two. Next, on to our next stack. I'm going to go ahead and move forward the next stack of books. Next, we have another Titan Books novel, the official movie novelization by Greg Cox. Greg, I know you're in the movie uh, novelization book club, so shout out to you. We have the official movie novelization for War for the Planet of the Apes uh, with Andy Serkis and Woody Harrelson. Next, one that I have been looking forward to finding and it's funny because I've read Last Stand, and it's going to be weird because I can read them out of order. I haven't read X2 yet. Uh, now a major motion blockbuster from 20th Century Fox, a novelization by Christine Catherine Roosh and Dean Wesley Smith. We have the novelization for X-Men. I know that there is another cover um, for this. Um... Uh, oh, this is the first edition. Wow. June 2000, first edition. That's really cool. So. Uh, next up, I've uh, been looking for this one for a while, too. And now I have it, because I have the second one. Um, the outrageous novel, based on the major motion picture from Columbia Pictures and Amberlin Entertainment. Uh, protecting the Earth from the Scum of the Universe. We have... Mr. Jones and Mr. Smith, Men in Black. Let me see, is this one a first edition too? Nope, not a first edition. Eh, that's okay. And there is some embossment on the cover. Uh, next up, we have another Del Rey movie tie-in, now a major motion picture, based on the Marvel comic book. Uh, the official novelization of the film by D.A. Stern, based on the original screenplay by Jonathan Hen Hensley, we have the novel for The Punisher. And let's see, is this one, a, this book feels like new. First edition, March 2004. This is really cool to have this then. Awesome. Stack number three. And now we are on to our final stack of videos. Um, <clears throat> before I continue, I would have liked to do a one-page preview for each of these books that I got. Um, but this video would have just been too dang long. So I did the first, I did the, um, I did a little bit of a one-page preview for each of them. So, um, but yeah, let's continue into this final stack of books uh, based on the Warner Brothers picture film a novelization by John Shirley screenplay by Kevin Brodbain, Brod, Brodbin and Frank Capillaro story, story by Kevin Brodbin uh, we have the novel for Constantine with 
the greatest Canadian wonder. Uh, <laughs> I pee on leaves. Let's see, is this one of the first edition? Nope, no first edition. Would have been nice if it was the first edition, but it's not. Never seen this, but I have seen like um, animated Constantine's before. And next, now a major motion picture from Warner Brothers, starring Will Smith, Kevin Klein, and Kenneth Branagh. A uh, story by Jim Thomas and John Thomas, screenplay by S. S. Wilson and Barrett Maddock, and Jeffrey Price and Peter B. Seaman. Novelization by Bruce Betke. Bet 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 we have Wild Wild West. Uh, I love the cover. Uh, I have been looking for this for a while. Um, Amazon, this book was expensive. Uh, I don't know how, I forget how much I paid. Uh, on the receipt, it doesn't say each title. Um, it just says science fiction, horror fiction, action thriller. That's all it says. It doesn't say uh, the titles. So, uh, let's see. I, now I like looking to see if this is first edition. First paperback printing, July 1999. So I guess that means first edition. Hmm. Cool. So, uh, and there's no embossment. I wish that there was. So, this one, uh, I heard, is very hard to find in the wild, and I was very lucky to find it. Um, and I'm happy to have another great Steven Spielberg classic in my collection. Close Encounters of the Third Kind. Uh, a novel by Steven Spielberg. Um, this is a beautiful looking copy. Uh, everything just looks fantastic. Um, I don't know if there's a way... Nope. Uh, not... Not um, first edition, but to have this is really cool. Um, and when I saw this, I was just like, I, I had to grab it. So, another book that was really hard to find on Amazon for a good, decent price, uh, and another novel by Max Allen Collins, the official novelization of the blockbuster film Go G.I. Joe, or, or just Go Yo Joe. Um, this, I love these movies, no matter what people say. Um, I know a lot of people call them crapola. Um, so, very happy to have this. Um, originally, when this book first came out, it was seven ninety nine. You know, with them having this, I wish that they made a novel for Retaliation. Um, you know, since they put the book out for the first one, it would have been nice to see a second novel uh, for the second movie. You, no, no second, no first edition, and that's it. It's okay. <clears throat> and we are down to our final two books in this massive novelization haul, and I'm just, I'm so grateful to have found these. Who knows when I'm gonna have another great haul like this? Cause if I buy more books again, it's probably only gonna be four books long. Um, now a major, based on a major motion picture from Universal Pictures, novelization by Jonathan Mayberry. Even though I stick with vampires, I am very happy to have found this book. We have the book for the reboot of The Wolfman. And I just like these tall mass markets. They're cool to read. And I have, uh, what you would call it, um... My copy of The Martian is like this. And hey, this is a first edition, February 2010. So, really cool to have this one. Can't wait to read it. Excited. And our final one, even though the structure is really weird, I think this is, like, this is the, the book for, the, I mean, it is the book for the movie. 
it just I feel like it's a really weird layout. I've scrolled, I've looked through it, and it's a weird layout. But it it's the it's the movie novelization uh, for by Max Brooks for World War Z uh, with Brad Pitt. And I have no idea who the other people are in this movie. Uh, and <clears throat> I think the Zombie Survival Guide, I believe that's the book that comes before this. Um, I When I first saw the trailer, I was just like confused because um, the zombies were weird. So, no first edition, because I know the first edition is the one that has like just the regular base cover on it. So... And that is our last stack. So, very, very uh, awesome that I was able to find all these books. Um, this store, I'll say this, was very, very bad for me. Um, but, unlike so many other bookstores and book sales uh, that I've gone to, this was one of the most organized um, bookstores uh, that I have ever been to. And it was so clean and easy to navigate around and everything. Uh, the staff was very nice. Uh, and the prices for the books are very reasonable. So I will be going back there again because um, they're always accepting donations and everything. And uh, they don't just, um, they don't just accept books. They have video games, they have soundtracks, vinyls, Funko Pops, uh, games and and toys and everything. So, uh, it's, oh, and Beanie Babies. So, um, if you find a McKay's used books where you live, um, or just like, I know, like, in Oklahoma, half price books, this is my half price books. So, very happy to have all these in my collection. Can't wait to get to them and read them. Um, with all that being said, thank you, thank you, thank you for sticking on for this long video. Again, it is the longest day of the year. It's the summer solstice, so I was deemed necessary. Um, like I said, I did a one-page preview for some of them, not for all of them, because uh, just the video was getting too long. But um, thank you guys for checking out this video today, and I will see you guys next time inside a media cabinet. Peace.